welcome back to video two of my new tbcguys.gg series no clickbait titles no ridiculous thumbnails just simple easy to use guides without the bs and fluff and thank you everyone on the patreon who has supported this series so far a big shout especially to the new tier threes jesse rubenstein dustin israel brendan krugman you guys and everyone else on the patreon allows me to make this series and say screw the youtube algorithm we're just gonna make high quality guides and no clickbait hopefully people watch them and it's it's been kind of crazy to see the support since the last video so thank you so much it's appreciated and let's get into the guide so today i have a gigantic tbc guide and ui cheat sheet for my fellow rogues out there it includes every single tbc add-on i've updated tested including my weak auras for rogues and it's gonna be a long one so time sense in the description i cover a lot of different ui elements and things that i've added and tweaked basically i redid and streamlined my UI to one, make it easier to install and get up and running for fellow rogues. And two, I wanted it to be really good for PvP. So I changed some bar settings into icons and other things. Basically, I just wanted the entire UI to be really, really good for PvP so you could get the information that you need when you're PvPing and nothing that you don't. So yeah, let's hop into it. All right, guys. So this is my UI breakdown and how to set up all the different elements of my UI, why I set it up that way, what I recommend for you guys, and all the add-ons and things that I've tested for TBC and updated to work better for TBC. So if you're not familiar with my UI, I designed my UI to basically show nothing that you don't need to know. So for example, you notice I have no hotbars, but I do have hotbars, they're just mouse over. Right? I have hotbars here, I have hotbars here, and I have another hotbar here as well. So I do have a bunch of hotbars, and then my main hotbar is actually here, but hidden completely. But I don't need to see them, right? You don't need that information confusing you, especially when you're going into arenas. Why do you need that information? You, you don't need to know that backstab is your number one button. You, you should remember that by that now. So I basically hide anything that you don't need to know, and my UI is very reactive. So for example, if I sprint, you can see the sprint cooldown comes up here, um, showing how long I have on my sprint. But then my cooldown here also fades and it shows the duration of the cooldown. Same goes with the PVE section here. So I have a PVP cooldown section here and then a PVE section here. Um, you can see up here, it tells me how long I need for stealth. So up here is a short cooldowns reactive area. So if I kick, it tells me how long I have on kick. Same if I kidney shot or if I distract or anything like that. So if I pull up my full UI, you'll be able to see it better. So these are if all the weak auras were showing at the same time. Obviously, everything's not going to show at the same time. There'll be too much things, but it's uh, it's very reactive to show everything that you, you kind of need. So the reason I have it set up like this is because in arena and PvP, you don't want to be looking off to the corners of your screen to try to figure out what's going on. So this way, if you're in the middle of PvP, you want to know, oh, when's my kidney shot coming up? It'll, there'll be a big icon up here with your kidney shot cooldown. If you want to know how long is this cheap shot going to last on this guy, or how long is the blind going to last on the enemy, or it'll be an icon that appears here. And then down here in the middle here, this is more to track your active uh, DPS cooldown. So like your trinket timers, your uh, mongoose procs, your trinket usages, your slice and dice timers. You see, I, I highlight slice and dice with a glowy thing here because I, I think slice and dice, sometimes you have 5,000 cooldowns going on at the same time. Slice and dice is better to stand out that way. So yeah, this is basically my UI. I changed everything from the old way I did things with bars and cooldown bars all over the place. I had bars in the corner. For those that use my UI before, I had bars in the corner down here that had my cooldowns. But I changed that mostly because for Arena, I like icons. Icons, I think, give you the information way quicker without needing to look off in the corner for a bar or anything like that. Okay, so before we continue, just know that I'm going to run through my entire UI now and every single UI, how to set up the things that you need to set up as well. So if you only need to know how to do certain things in UI. I recommend using timestamps in the description. They're there. And everything I do for my UI is linked on my website as well, tbcguys.gg. There's a section for rogue UI. And I've 
kind of organized everything nicely for you guys. So you can see if you want just my combo points bar, you can download it here. Uh, if you want any of my base elements like Threat Classic 2, LVI, Red Task, everything is organized nicely into my standard drop down menus as you guys have always been using. So yeah, if you guys need any of the links to any of the things I talk about or you want to find where can I download the TBC version of it, I highly recommend you check out the website. It's all linked there. And of course, I do recommend wowapp.io. So wowapp.io is a really good uh, managing add-ons plugin. So once you have a ton of add-ons, I recommend you download wowapp.io. The reason why I didn't link it directly from wowapp.io for the initial download is right now they're getting slammed, same with Curse. The, <laughs> they're getting so many people using them that it's really slow right now and versions aren't updating right away sometimes. So I recommend you actually just download a right from the source. So I've linked you to the direct source. So Red Tux and Red Tusk and LVI download links go straight to the Tuck UI website, the Weak Auras and, and Curse websites uh, link directly. So yeah, you can get all the links that you want on the website at tbcguys.gg. Okay, so let me run you through the core of my UI now. So I have LVI slash Red Tusk UI as my base. So LVI is probably the most popular UI add-on in WoW. And Red Task UI is a skin on top of LVI. So to uh, get my UI, you first need to install both LVI and Red Task UI if you want to do this. And then after you install Red Task UI, this installer will pop up. So you just need to run through this installer. It'll basically just get all your skins enabled and options enabled as well. Now, as far as profiles go, I've given you my profile. If you wanted to just copy paste, like you, you like how I have my, my bar set up and everything, you can copy and paste my profile. It's also linked on the tbcguides.gg website linked below on my UI page. So you'll be able to import it if you want. So you go to profile, then you click on import profile up here, and then you can import my profile into here if you want it to look exactly like mine. So one other thing I will mention about Red Task UI and LVI is that if you're not using my profile, you want to kind of configure it yourself to look how you want it to look, then go under action bars, uh, player bars, bar one. So Red Task has it kind of set up where your stealth bar doesn't change. He's one of those people that doesn't like his stealth bar changing. So he uses a separate bar for his stealth bar so that his hotkeys and, and stances doesn't change uh, from, from bar one. So if you want to resend that back into how it normally behaves. So for example, if you stealth, your bar changes to your stealth bar. Uh, you want to go to bar one here under action bars and player bars and click reset action paging. That will kind of get rid of uh, the special unique behavior in Red Task UI for your stealth bar. Okay, so now let's go over this, just the core elements of my UI or the core add-ons that I think that you, you have to install. So weak auras for one, if you never used weak auras before, you install it, you type slash WA, then you can import whatever you want here. You click import, then you can paste in here. So all of these things you see behind me that show up here, all these fancy little cooldowns and things, these are all built in weak auras. So you're going to need weak auras if you want to grab any of my rogue UI elements. But then you just go to the weak auras page. There'll be a button that says click to copy. So you copy and then you paste the code into here, click done, and it will import any of my weak auras for you. So that, that way you can copy and paste just the weak auras that you want from my UI. Okay, so the next thing you need is details for your damage meters. So I have details here. When you install Red Task UI, it will actually skin your details to look like this. So yeah, this is my details. It actually starts you off with a threat meter as well. So for people that don't know, details has a built-in threat meter called Tiny Threat. Personally, I don't use it, so I closed it. So if you get two details windows when you install Red Task UI and you want to close one, you can just go here under the, the gear icon here, window control close on the second window that's for tiny threat. Now what I do use instead is threat classic 2. So you type slash TC2 if you have threat classic 2 enabled. And this is my threat classic. So I like threat classic because it's really quick and easy to set up the way I like it to look. So if we look at uh, what it looks here, these are my settings. If you want to copy them, go ahead. So I'm scrolling through so you can see all my settings. Gilroy Bold is the font I use for any UI because it's the default font option in Red Task UI. So just to match, I always change everything to Gilroy Bold if it's possible. Now, one setting I recommend you enable here is these custom bar colors. So custom bar colors are really good in Threat Classic 2 because they make you stand out. If you don't have them enabled, you have a bar with a bunch of billion different colors for everyone. But you want to be able to quick glance at your threat 
and see okay where am i on the thread so if you enable this enable custom player color this will make you red if you enable this enable custom tank color this will make it green for your tank and then other unit colors here if you enable that that will make everyone else gray so this means that if your tank is on this and you're on this and other people are on this you will be able to glance and see okay i'm the red guy and then the tank is the the green guy so this makes it really simple for you guys so that's why I recommend for your general settings, I recommend you hide frame when not in group and hide frame when in battlegrounds because obviously you don't need your threat meter showing when you're not in a dungeon group or a raid or something like that. Okay, next is Plater nameplates. So Plater is really, really great. Uh, when you install Red Task UI, it will actually install a Plater nameplate for you. So you don't actually need to import my Plater nameplate or anything. It comes with Red Task UI. There's a Plater uh, nameplate option. Okay, next we have mixed scrolling battle text. So if we go near this mob and it starts hitting me, you can see any incoming damage is on this side, outgoing damage is on the other side. So MSBT is really good because uh, it separates things so that you can kind of differentiate what's going on versus if you're using the default Blizzard UI, it's really, really confusing sometimes looking at it because you, you just have a jumbled mess of things popping up. So this kind of makes it easier to see what's going on with the damage going in and damage going out. So you can see if I do damage on this side, it appears on this side of the screen. Now for MSBT options, I do recommend you copy my settings here. Unfortunately, they don't let me export any profiles, so you're going to have to go in and then copy my settings exactly like this. So I will show you uh, on the general here. Uh, I uncheck enable blizzard damage because you don't need two damage meters if you have MSBT. And then I don't like sticky crits because sticky crits makes it confusing because sometimes the damage will stay on your screen when you're trying to see whether you're attacking and things like that. I, I disable sticky crits. Now for scroll areas, this is how I have my scroll areas set up. If you want to copy that, you can copy paste. This is where I have them set up. Uh, and these are the general settings here for the animation styles and things. Now what you need to change in your MSBT is under events. So you can see here, this is where it tracks all the things that come in. But by default, MSBT tracks too many things. It will spam you if you don't turn some things off. So I'm going to go through now and show you where you can turn things off. So you can see for these, I don't have anything off. But if we go down to, I think it's notifications. You can see this is where I turned a lot of things off. So I turned off buff notifications, item buffs, buff fades. I also turned off reputation gains, experience gains, NPC killing blows, and extra attacks. So this gets rid of a lot of the spam that's going to be coming in. So next you'll be under spam control is I do have hide full hot overheals enabled, but uh, you, you can play around with these settings here. If you want to abbreviate the skill names, you think people's names are too lo long, or you don't want to see anyone's names when they heal you or whatever it is, you, you can hide those things as well. Now for cooldowns, I also disabled player cooldowns because uh, I thought the spam was annoying. Whenever like one cooldown would come up, it would spam me about it. So I turned that off as well. Loot alerts, I turned off money gains. Uh, this is up to you. But And then I also turned off poor alerts because I don't need to know when I pick up vendor trash. Okay, next we have DBM. So if you don't have DBM, type slash DBM once you have it installed. I, I feel like everyone uses DBM at this point in time, but let me show you where I position my frames. So if you want to move your DBM frames, you can go to uh, bar appearance here under slash DBM and then timers bar appearance, you click move me. It can move where the things appear, right? So this is where I have things right now. So I have my long timers here and then when it gets big, uh, it appears in the middle here. This is why I have it set up. You can kind of set it up wherever you want. I'm, I'm playing around with the DBM spot location. I might actually move this one down here a little bit more. It's, it's up to you where you set up your DBM timers. And if you want your DBMs to look like mine, by the way, you see how it looks kind of pretty like this. So it's an extra add-on here. If we go under LVUI, add-on skins is a separate add-on. And it's got this option here called DBM half bar skin. So if you have that checked, it makes your DBM look like mine. Okay, so now let's go through rogue weak auras that I use. So first is my rogue combo points. Now, I can't take full credit for this one. I found one I liked and I tweaked it to match the colors and the settings that I preferred. So you can see here, if I do something here, we get a combo point. It shows in the middle here. You notice there's a circle here in the middle. This circle shows your GCD timer. So if I tack or do anything, 
it shows my GCD timer. Now that's very useful because um, rogues have a one second GCD. Sometimes you want to take advantage of that GCD. So I just like seeing it. I think it's kind of a neat feature. That's why I have the circle on the outside that shows the GCD. Okay, now the next thing I have is my energy bar ticker. So for energy bar, you can see here, it's just a standard simple energy bar. Now the ticker code is actually important. I used Yam's energy tick overlay here and modified it to match mine because other energy tickers get confused when you get, for example, combat potency energy procs, it will reset and think that you just got an energy tick. So Yams avoids that and that's why I use his energy tick overlay. So yeah, if you want my energy ticker bar, the weak aura is there. Next, we have my active bar tracker. So this is just a very easy way to track your actives. So for example, if you pop any DPS cooldowns, it will show up here in the middle. And it's just a, a very easy way to track your actives in the middle here. I actually have it set up that in a PvE scenario, it will show your rupture and exposed armor cooldowns as well. So if the mob is ruptured or exposed armored, it will track that as well down here in the middle. So all your cooldown management for when you're in a PvE scenario, you can just have a quick glance here and see what's going on with your rotation. So for example, I'll give you a little demonstration. If we go over here, so I sprint towards the mob, sprint shows up. If I, for example, get some combo points here, we get a slice and dice going. So you can see slice and dice. I make slice and dice glowy because uh, I like it to stand out. If I have, for example, 5,000 combo things and, and things procced at the same time, I want to be able to quick glance and see, okay, slice and dice is here. So that's why I make it glowy. And just a heads up, I get a lot of questions about any circle things that I do. So you see down here, I have some circle weak auras and then you, you saw my slice and dice was a circle. If you ever want to do any circles, that's really easy. You just go into mask. So type slash mask. This is another add-on I use. It's also linked on the page. So under mask, you go under your weak auras and then I downloaded a skin called Rayleigh Ring Inset. So it's just a skin called Rayleigh. It's also linked on the TBC Guides website page there under my uh, mask profiles and things. So yeah, you just download this Rayleigh thing and it can change any weak aura into a circle, basically. So you just go onto your weak auras, you find the one that applies and then you change the skin into a uh, ring, yeah. Okay, next is my rogue short cooldown tracker. So this is the rogue short cooldown tracker at the top. So I have it at the top here so that when I'm in arenas, when I'm PVPing, you can kind of see uh, how long do you have left on your kidney duration? When's your, when is your kick coming back up? When is my gouge coming back up? How long do I need before I can stealth again? Uh, what's my bandage cooldown, ghostly strike cooldown. So it's very handy. Even just the stealth one is actually really handy. So for example, if we stealth here and I exit stealth, so let's say we click this off, you can see this is how long before I can stealth again. And this is this is a, actually a really handy one. I use that a lot more than, than you realize, just knowing when, when you're able to stealth again. Okay, so next is the Rogue CC and Diva Tracker. So here is my weak aura for that. People that use my UI before remember that this used to be a bar. This used to be bar format, kind of like another popular add-on called Nug Running. But for arenas and PvP, I found that icons were just better for a quick information instead of a bar. So I just like having the icons here. So this is a reactive bar that will show all the enemy things that appear. So this actually covers a lot of things. It says blind, cheap shot, gouge, kidney, rupture, garrotes, expose, sap, disarm. It tracks all your poisons as well on people. Uh, if you silence kick them, if you silence garrote them, that tracks as well. And actually it shows distract, which is kind of neat. So it'll actually show distract. So for example, if I distract this mob here, um, this is my distract cooldown here. And then here is how long the mob is distracted which is, is actually really handy. In, in raids, sometimes you're asked to distract things. So this is actually a, kind of a handy one to have. But yeah, so that's my new um, bar. So again, we'll show it over there. For example, if I sap, sap appears. If I blind, blind appears. Um, basically any CC and any rogue type things on the enemy appear over on that side. So we can even expose armor here, expose shows up. Oh, and one other thing I need to mention about the debuffs that are tracked on this bar over here is that if you expose armor or rupture in a raid, this won't show. So I, I made this one for PvP. I actually was testing it and I preferred your rupture and expose armor showing uh, in the active section when you're PvE, right? Because um, if we go back to my rogue actives over here, 
when you're PVEing, you don't want to have to look up over here to see where's where's the rupture cooldown, where's where's the exposed armor, how how many seconds is that at? You just want to be able to look down here, right? So I made it so that when you're doing PVE, you look at the rogue actives down here, and that will show you like your slice and dice, your rupture, if if someone has exposed or if you have exposed on it, it will show. Then when you're doing PVP, you look more at the uh, debuff cooldowns over here for your rupture and expose because that's that's kind of a separate thing for arenas and pvp okay next is my pvp hud in the middle here so this middle section you'll notice there's more skills that you have right now because when pre-patched this is designed for tbc so once tbc starts there'll be more things that appear here in the middle as well so it's actually got a cloak of shadows shadow stat prep and your pre-mad cooldowns are here as well so i have this enabled like this because in the past I had uh, these cooldowns show up in the corner on a bar but for PvP I just want to be able to quick glance and see what I have available. So you can see if my blinds on cooldown it shows blind over there. If I use sprint it fades it, it shows my cooldown here. Same with like racials. I have added all the racials as well so if you are a different race it will show a different racial here as well instead of the will of the forsaken. Now when it's 10 seconds away from finishing timer it actually glows a circle around it. So it'll, it'll show like Cloak of Shadows, 10 seconds, and then it'll count down and you see this glowy box around it. This is just to remind you like, oh, my cooldown's up. Okay, in case you didn't manage to see it before. Now, one interesting thing that you don't see active right now because I set this only to load when you're in arenas is a combat indicator. Because sometimes you just need to know whether you're in combat or not. And sometimes uh, you, these, these UIs all have a combat indicator. I think the LVUI one is here, but it's pretty small. So I just wanted something that stood out. So yeah, and if you again, if you want to make it a circle, you can make it a circle using the Rayleigh skin that I showed you earlier in the video. Okay, now the next week aura I have is the Rogue uh, Red Tusk TBC stats. So this basically brings this extra little section here you can see that gives you some extra stats. You notice that crit cap isn't on this one if you're using the classic version. Crit cap uh, is gone now for TBC because in general you're not crit capping in TBC anymore so um, it's, it's not a stat that you need to know. But yeah this will just give you an easy track of your expertise, your haste, your crit etc. It's just a it's just a very handy little weak aura that I think almost every rogue I know likes to use this one. Okay, now one uh, simple, simple weak aura that I like is Time to Die. So this will actually only load when you're in raids. So this is set to not load when you're not raiding and such. But this is just a simple Time to Die weak aura. What, what it means is it will calculate how long the mob has till to die, roughly speaking. So it will look at the DPS your raid has been doing and then calculate, okay, the mob will die in 30 seconds. This is just to help with your rotations. So I position it over my target window. You can actually move it wherever you want. But um, that's where I have it positioned. It's just a very simple time to die weak aura. Okay, now the last weak aura that we're going to cover here is uh, PVE. So this one is actually not available to everyone. I'm, I'm still kind of testing this one out, so I'm not going to release it to everyone just yet. It is available for my patrons. So if the patrons want to play around with this while I'm still working on making and improving this one more, you guys can check it out. It will be available to the public later. But right now, it's just a Patreon only one. So this is my PVE cooldown tracker. So it needs a little bit more work because right now it's only set up to uh, calculate one trinket at a time. So uh, right now it's set up to calculate Slayer's Crest, but this basically shows your active uh, PVE cooldowns so that you don't need a bar anymore. You can actually replace this by putting a hot bar here and that will do mostly the same job, but this is a little bit fancier. So. This will track if you have a trinket active equipped. So I have it set to Slayer's Crest right now. It will show you the uh, Slayer's Crest cooldown here when it pops up. So this is just to remind you because one of the biggest things in PvE DPS is just remembering to use your cooldowns. A lot of rogues forget to use the Adrenaline Rush, their Blade Flurry on cooldown. And then when you look at the overall DPS at the end of a raid, you notice that, oh, this other rogue did 10 more blade flurries than I did and he got so much more damage by doing that. So this is basically designed to remind you, oh, okay, I need to use my cooldowns. So when the cooldown is up, it will glow like this. When it's on cooldown, it will fade and show the cooldown like this. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just a very handy reminder kind of bar to help you make sure you're always remembering to use all your DPS cooldowns in PvE. 
So right now I have it tracking Trinket, Haste Pot, Adrenaline Rush, BF, T and Drums. I actually have it specially set up so that this only shows T and Drums if you have them in your bags. Same with the Haste Pot and the Trinket only shows up if you have the actual Trinket equipped. So this way you never see anything that you don't need to see. Uh, this is also set up to not show when you're in arenas and BGs because um, typically you're not going to need to know this if you're doing arena and BGs because uh, these are all PvE cooldowns. Okay, so now next I have two poison uh, related add-ons. So Hemlock, if you guys have never seen it, is great. You should have a, I heavily recommend downloading Hemlock. So Hemlock add-on does this, where you can set, this is how many instant poisons, deadly poisons, etc. Et you want to have. So I can one click here. So for example, if I delete this flash powder I have, you will see that I only have 40 flash powder and I set it to always buy me up to 60. So if I want 60 flash powder, I just click and it will auto buy me the 20 flash powder I need. So you can set this up for all your poisons. It will auto buy everything you need to get the amount of poisons that you want. And then you one click to buy and then you second click to create. So it's, it's really, really good. So for example, I ha don't have it set up for cripple poisons right now. So I right click uh, cripple poisons. Let's set it to, let's say I always want to have uh, 15 cripple poisons. I don't know, that's, that's a weird number. But let's say we wanted 15 cripple poisons. We click once, then Hemlock will open this, buy. Then we click again, Hemlock will make it for me. So it's very, very easy. It always makes the highest level of the poison that you have access to. Okay, next is Poisoner. So you see this little poison button down here? So this allows me to one-click poison. So for example, if I want deadly poison, I can right-click, left-click for my other weapon. So right-click for main weapon, left-click for offhand. I, if I press shift or I right click and left click it's cripple poison right if I press control it's wound poison for main hand off hand so this is a really handy little uh, poison button so if I type slash poisoner you can show it shows up here um, and you just set this up by doing poison sets and then if you have this um, it will give you this quick button that you can move around and it's, it's just very very handy I, I really like poisoner now poisoner does have a buying option but i don't use it because it's been broken for a long time that's why i use hemlock instead of poisoner for buying poisons the other thing that it does give you as well is a warning so it actually shows a warning uh when you need to be reminded about poisons and things uh if you want to use them it's here i recommend you turn off sound chat because this is really annoying. Every time your poison runs out, it'll play a sound that says, your poisons have expired. And it's it's really annoying. So I turned that off. And if you want to move that aura, or you want to use it, uh, these are the settings here. So you can enable, disable them, uh, lock and unlock. So it's actually here right now. It's not showing it because I'm in a city. So it doesn't show it because it doesn't think I need poisons right now. But you can move that aura around if you, if you want. It's just a handy poison reminder aura. Okay, so the next add-on I want to show you guys is Diminish. So Diminish shows diminishing returns on uh, enemies and things. So if you show it now, I'll toggle test mode on. It basically shows up um, in icon forms like, oh, okay, this guy's got diminishing returns on stuns, on roots, and incapacitates. It can show up on enemy nameplates. It can show up on enemy targets here. It can show up on your own uh, diminishing returns as well. So it tracks diminishing returns. It's very handy. You can configure it how you like. But uh, this is how I have it set up right now. So I have it set up that uh, my own diminishing returns are here. Enemy diminishing returns is over here. And uh, then I have the nameplate ones as well. So it's very, very handy. I highly recommend it. I think everyone that PVPs uses this one. Okay, now one really, really, really handy one is ECDC, enemy cooldown count. Type slash ECDC. If you want to configure it, you click this hide the fist icon thing and you move this fist icon where you want this bar to appear basically. But this bar is super, super, super good. So you can see this is where I have ECD set up. It's just a bar here and it will track everything that was used while I was in range to know that it was used basically. So for example, um, it says my sprint is coming up in a while. It doesn't know. It's kind of, it kind of has to guess because it doesn't know if you have the talents for the reduced sprint cooldowns and such. But you can see if I pop evasion here if i pop my ratio so it goes by target so if i target someone and they use their ratio their trinket their perception uh it shows me roughly what their cooldown is going to be it's not it's not perfect because sometimes there are talents that kind of change things that has to guess 
what their cooldown actually is, but it's very, very handy. I use this all the time, in particular to do with uh, perception versus enemy humans. I, I need to know, like maybe I'm fighting an enemy human in open world multiple times. I want to know, okay, is his perception still up? Is his trinket still up? I, I need to know these things. So it tracks all these things in a nice handy bar. Very, very good PvP add-on. Now the next one is S Arena. I don't have it uh, in game, so I'm just going to show it here because uh, I'm not doing arenas right now, but uh, I will install this and use it once I, I start doing arenas. S Arena, very, very good arena add-on. Uh, I think pretty much everyone uses this one. I'm not sure if there's many alternatives right now. So S Arena is the arena add-on bar that everyone uses. Okay, next we have some general add-ons. So I use Item Rack Classic right now. So Item Rack is this. Uh, which brings up like a trinket menu that shows all my trinkets. I only have three trinkets on this guide. That's why there's only one option to swap out. But you know, you can right click, left click to swap it into whichever trinket slot you want. Now item rack actually allows you to make something for any of these slots. So if you want to make something for quick swapping your boots, for example, you can code alt, click on the boots here, and you can see boots shows up. Maybe I want boots and gloves as well. So glove shows up as well. So you can make a bar that you can kind of pull anywhere on the screen and put anywhere you want for quick swapping any gear like this. And if you want to get rid of it, you just out click again and it will disappear. So item rack is really powerful like that. You can also add up custom macros and things. I'm not using any right now, but you can have complete item sets where you just um, make an item rack set. So if I type slash item rack options, it pulls up this. So you can create sets of gear, save the set, and then uh, you can make keys that you just one click press that key and it will change your entire item set like that. So you can play around with item rack like this. It's a very powerful add-on. But what most people use it for is just this trinket option here. Now, one thing I will note is that I actually do prefer trinket menu for just my trinket management because trinket menu has an option to keep your trinkets open at all times. So you can see all your trinkets available and have it just in, in a big window that's visible all the time. But Trinket Menu is a little bit buggy right now, so I'm not using it. Until they fix it, I'm probably not going to use Trinket Menu, but um, I'm sure someone will get Trinket Menu functioning properly in, in the future. But for PvP reasons, sometimes I like to have a window with all my trinkets visible like that. Okay, now the next thing we have is Leetrix Plus. So if I install it and type slash LTP, we'll start Leetrix Plus. So Leetrix Plus is just a lot of just handy things that you might want. So for example, faster auto loot, a standard dismount. So for example, if I'm talking to the flight guy and I'm mounted and I click it, it will dismount me and then I click again and it'll fly. So it'll auto dismount you if there's anything that you need to do um, that requires you to be not mounted, right? So for example, if I am mounted and I go attack a mob, um, it, it won't tell me, please dismount. Or if I'm casting a spell on my caster, it won't say, please dismount. It'll, it'll dismount me and, and start attacking and such. So uh, Leetrix is really, really good. I, I like Leetrix Plus. Almost everyone uses it. You can actually disable um, your gray screen as well when you're dead. So I use it to disable that. Oh, and Leetrix Plus is very good because under the social tab, if someone's trying to grief you with party invites or party duel requests, you can just block them like this. So now no one can invite me to a party and it won't keep showing up on screen. Uh, I've seen a lot of streamers uh, get harassed like that. So you can just block it like this. Um, it also has a really fancy function called invite from whispers. A lot of people use this. Um, you can set whatever keyword. I, I don't know why I set it to Choco right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if someone whispers me the word Choco, they get invited. Okay, now the next thing is Leetrix Maps. So by having Leetrix Maps installed, it lets me change the size of my map screen. Uh, it reveals the entire map to me as well. So once you have Leetrix Maps, it makes everything visible. So it unfog of wars everything, which is really, really nice. So yeah, Leetrix Maps is, is a really, really good add-on as well. Okay, now if you're crazy like me and you like to customize your UI and set things aligned very well, there's this add-on called E-Align Updated, and it shows a grid if I type slash align. <laughs> and this basically just means I can center my UI the way I want to, because if my UI isn't centered, I get tilted. So yeah, this lets me center my UI. Okay, now something we covered earlier was mask. So mask is really, really good. Um, 
mask is why you see my weak auras don't look ugly here. So if you install mask and you type slash mask, um, I use two skins. I use the Rayleigh skin and the LVI-esque skin. Both of those are linked on the website as well. And it makes my weak auras skin to how I like it. So if you want the circle skin, you want the square skin that looks pretty instead of the ugly borders around them. So mask will allow you to skin anything. Even if you don't have LVI, you can make all your bars and icons and things look like LVI which is really handy so yeah mask is just for prettiness so yeah if you want to use mask you want go skin settings and then under weak auras you basically can set it to be by default it will apply to everything but if you have specific weak auras that you want to enable specific skins to um, for example my circle skins you can find the weak aura name here and then just change the skin to whatever you want okay next is my slot super super handy if you have multiple characters if you have a play on PTR, if you ever copy your character anywhere, if you want to copy your macros from one character to another, it's it's pretty much a must have, it saves you so much time. So if you install my slot, type slash my slot, you can export or import your macros and keybinds to a different character. So right now I have Snow White main saved here, and then I can export or import it um, however I want, which uh, saves me a lot of time. That's how I got my macros and keybinds set up a lot easier on this character. Okay, now next is Questy. Uh, if you don't know Questy, uh, I don't know anyone that doesn't know Questy at this point. Questy just makes it easier for you to track your quests and things. Uh, we won't really cover it because uh, everyone knows what Questy is. It's, uh, it's just a very good quest add-on that makes your quest log a lot easier to manage and shows you when you need to, to pick up things for a related quest. Okay, now there are more add-ons I actually want to use, but I'm waiting for good versions of them to come out. So right now there's loss of control that I'm kind of waiting. I have it on my character, but I disabled it because it was causing a lot of bugs for TBC. Loss of control is a weak aura you can have, which shows the longest and strongest CC on you. So if, for example, if you're hit by like a blind, a kidney shot, a fear, all at the same time, whatever, and, and you want to know, oh wait, how long do I have to sit in this CC? It shows this big icon over your character that shows how long you have to sit there. Um, and I just like it. It makes it easy in PvP to know how long you're CC'd for. Another one is Battleground Targets Classic. I haven't been able to get this working in TBC yet. I hope it works at some point, but it brings up a target bar for all the people in the Battleground. So when you want to target an enemy, it, it shows a list of people for you to target. Another one is Project Azil Roka. It has a bunch of useful features that basically if you go back to um, game, so if we go back to game and you see how I can move everything like this, this is Project Azure Roka, it's one of the features. It lets me move any windows and things in game. I have it installed, but I don't know. It's up to you if you want to use it. It's a little bit buggy right now. It's, this isn't the TBC version. They're still working on releasing the TBC version. But uh, yeah, Project Azure Roka is kind of like um, Leetrix Plus for LVI. It just has a whole bunch of uh, features for LVI and, and such. So it's, it's a very good add-on. It's just not working completely perfectly yet. Now the other one you see I don't have installed right now is Addy Bags. So my bags are kind of messy. I have a whole video on Addy Bags. I'll link it. I'll keep it linked in the guide website. It's uh, I haven't installed it yet because uh, I tried one version but it wasn't per working perfectly. I think it might have been updated. Hopefully it's working now. But um, yeah, Addy Bags I use to manage my bags. I have a whole separate v video on that. It'll be linked on the website as well. Okay, and finally, I just wanted to show you guys wowup.io again. So once you have a billion add-ons installed, I highly recommend you get wowup.io. So it's also linked uh, on the page there, or you can just go to wowup.io and download it easily. And it's, uh, it's very good when you have so many add-ons to keep updated, uh, wowup.io keeps them updated. So I can just like one click update really, really easily. Okay, so that's my TBC UI mega guide cheat sheet. I appreciate the support guys. Again, the Patreon support has been kind of crazy since the last video came out. Uh, it's it's kind of scary sometimes to start a new project like that because you don't know if it's going to work, especially something like this where you're going against the YouTube algorithm by not using the clickbait titles and the thumbnails and such to get people to come click on your videos. So I, I just appreciate it. I appreciate the support on Patreon. And if of course, if you want to join, it's always linked below and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.